Okay, recording. That's it, folks. Okay. Okay, so this talk's called like drinking my own champagne, you know, like my personal journey on using poop. Well, first things first, uh, who I am? Well, uh, I'm Deco. I'm uh, currently a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Half of my journey was about uh, infrastructure management, you know, and some of that time was helping uh, maintaining some mirrors and some computer labs using rsync and some other obscure tools that I don't want to talk about this year. Okay, so why use poop? You know, or, or at least why use poop locally? You know, well, because I can. Of course you can, but you know, like you need that. I believe like the real reason here is to have some empathy with our users, you know, like um, what they are facing, you know, like when someone wants to try to use poop, you know, like most of the folks maybe could try, you know, like to use on, a, on your local network, on your local uh, laboratory, you know, like instead of just deploying it to a bigger audience here, you know. Basically, it's walking on someone else's shoes. You know, like why, like what our users are facing. You know, like what are the issues that they could face the first time they try to use it. Uh, also, maybe you know, like you could do some quick experiments. You know, like you could have like dozens of VMs running a distro sync. You know, like and pulling content from poop. And you could also build some images from pointing to that book instance, you know, like instead of downloading content directly from from an upstream repository. Here at my home, uh, I have uh, one desktop, three laptops, and some small size computers, just like raspberries and a Pine64 and some other uh, small form computers. You know, like all of them are running Fedora 38 here. You know, uh, what is serving, you know, like which kind of machine is serving my, uh, this sort of environment here, you know, oh, it's a very small machine, you know, like a very modest machine. Uh, it's a Dell wise thing client, you know, uh, very commonly found on point of sales and terminals. And this is a. I would say like pretty old one, but you know, like it's a very modest, very simple machine. You know, like it's it have like a GX four fifty and GA SOC. You know, like pretty common from AMD. Have video and some a radium video, and it have like two cores and two threads. You know, like basically it's showing for me like four processors, and it have like ten gigs of RAM. Two sort of ports, you know, like one I'm using for DOS, and the other one is a four terabyte hard disk drive for storage. You know, like if you could see, like this that one right beside, right this at the side of the machine. And one very good point for this machine, you know, like is the passive cooling. You know, like you don't have like mechanical parts on this. It's just. Uh, it's just like passive cooling, you know, like, which is very good, by the way. It could handle like a, a good amount of load. Okay, and about running poop. So, when we think about a user, it's not like what would be a first choice, you know, like when they're reading a project, pretty new, you don't know anything about it, you know, like uh, what will be a, a user's first choice? Probably it's going to be like the all in one image container, you know, like the one that we are running. We have S6 controlling all our stuff, you know, like workers, content, API, and a database instance. And, you know, like it's very simple to use, it. you know, like one process to rule them all. And some pros and cons about, about that setup, you know, like 
what we have for pros, you know, like it's very easy with just one comment, you can uh, spin up, you know, like a poop installation, you know, basically you run and forget about it. It's very good if you don't want to know the details about it, you know, like I just, you know, like I, I'm not really into any sort of poop detail, you know, like I don't want to know how many parts or, you know, like how it's configured inside of, you know, I just want to try poop, you know, like, and using this way, you know, like it's pretty simple to, to spin up, to start it up. Okay. Well, some counts about it, you know, like we don't have uh, granular metrics, you know, like we don't know uh, how much each part is demanding from, from the machine, you know, like if you are serving content, we don't know how much uh, Nginx or the poop content is demanding from my current machine, you know. And also another point is I can share pieces with other softwares here, you know, like I can share my Postgres instance with uh, other applications that could use this. Uh, sorry. Well, let me share also some tips about about this usage I'm having for some of us. Uh, the first one is that you could generate some unit files uh to allow system d to control that pooping instance you know like you could just check the status and restart you know uh for some versions of podman you know you, know, you could easily generate uh those unit files just running this command here podman generates system d probably you won't be able to read this at my right side here but basically like it's a unit file you know and it replicates the command that I use it to run the poop here, you know, into into the unit file. Also, you could define some uh, some verifications that are very good. You know, like just here, you can see like I have this line here after network online and media external. So I have this external hard drive and poop will only start after this drive is mounted, you know, like which is uh, very good thing uh this point here like having those unit files and using system d was very let's say essential here you know like i was trying to run poop like just one time and hoping that it kept running but somehow uh the process was dying after some after some time you know like just configuring this uh i could leave poop running you know like and basically forget about it you know, like it's running all the time the second tip that i want to share here you know like it's about well basically you have your poop instance and what happens if i leave my network you know like i won't have like any more any, any other updates so i was thinking about it and checking some options you know like for dnf i just found two very good options that I have been using here at my setup. You know, the first one is to configure, you know, like the, my repo files. Uh, the first one is using skip if an, uh, unavailable, you know, like for my poop uh, repo, my poop mirror here. So if uh, if I'm not at home, you know, like, and I try to run the, the, a distro sync or a DNF update, you know, like, uh, if somehow DNF can find my my repository here, you know, like it's just gonna skip, it will not break the update process. The second one is to change the priority of the Fedora repo itself, you know, like so I'm setting here to 100, and this will put the Fedora repo, you know, like as uh, let's say like less priority. You know, like with a lower priority over over my local poop uh, repository here. You know, like so with this, with those two things here. You know, like uh, I will not lo uh, lose my updates when I leave my home here, but I also I will I will always get 
uh, content from my poop instance instead of getting them from the directly from the internet itself. Uh, okay, after all this genre here, uh, what could be like the next steps? You know, like on this my on the on this humble app. The first thing is try to use a different set of containers. You know, like instead of using the all-in-one image, maybe I will try to use um, different images. You know, like and running it with as different containers. You know, like for each part of you know, like having one container, one instance, just for poop API, one another just for poop content, and the third one just for the for the workers, you know, like. And to do that, uh, I just found like I find uh, I found uh, some options here, you know, like uh, Podman just recently, very recently, you know, like uh, started to publish together, you know, like the Quadlets, you know, like which um allows unit files to control directly the containers itself you know like you, you could you could use like a new section here just to say like i want to have like this image and you're gonna exact like the entry point here uh also we could try to use the podme compose we have some examples on our poop oci images repo you know like we can which basically like run each part of poop as uh, a different process here or even like use the poop operator itself you know uh, if i'm going to use the quadlets you know like the podman generate system d have this flag you know like dash dash new which generate the unit files using this new quadlets format and also you know like if i want to try to, the poop operator we have to we could use kind you know, like which instead of using virtual machines, you ba it basically like uses uh, containers itself. You know, like as nodes for the application and the cluster itself. You know, so we could use pump operator on this very simple machine here. Also, another point, you know, like it's to obtain the telemetry of of all pull parts here. You know, like which is very cool for home dump. Uh, smart home dashboards, sorry, and uh, could give us some insights and some data for this usage, you know. And basically, that's it. Thank you so much, and I really hope you enjoyed this journey as I have enjoyed for the last year. Uh, Right now, I'm opening up for questions, so please feel free to to ask anything. Let me see here in the chat. Okay. So, folks, uh, any sort of questions? Kirin, please. Uh, I have a question, but it's just uh, you. I think link to your Google, Google Docs for the slides, but I can't access them. Presumably, one has to be a Red Hat Google or something. Is there a way to get? Oh, sorry, I gotta check on that. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a way to set the permissions so that they'll be okay. available. To you. I believe, like, I clicked on publish, and I just thought that after that, like, anyone from outside of Red Hat would be able to access that. But I gotta check on that. So you sorry. only run Fedora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have just I have the base repo and the updates repo for Fedora. Just both like those two repos. You know, but that's cool. Maybe in the future, you no, know, like we could change that. Well, no, I mean as a, like you know, as the system administrator for your home. Um, oh, for sure. To, keeping it to one operating system is smart. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah so. that's like i i'm still sharing my screen here let me show you uh i'm running this cockpit here and you know like it, we could see like this is my machine here and i believe i can uh, i can also check here you know like for both my containers you know like we can we could have like I had this 
it's so like I have some metrics here, but it's not that very granulated. You know, like I can check like how much each part of hoop is. Which version of top are you using? Uh, good question. Let me see if I can see it here. Oh, good. From uh, July. Probably. Yeah, yeah, cool. That's it. Need to do some updates here. Yeah, yeah. no, well, I mean, this is um, very typical of a pulp user. Um, if you look <laughs> at our analytics.pulpproject.org, you see that people, like, we released analytics with 3.21, I think, right? And like people just stay on 3.21. The people that installed it with 3.21, they just stay with it. Um, and yeah, our frequent, the frequency of our releasing, I think is making for some interesting metrics where there's just like people, very few people use every version um, from week to week. But anyway, um, yeah, thank you for sharing. For sure, for sure. I believe like uh, these metrics being collected with Catello, uh, if you're asking about my instance here, no, they are not. No, no, well, so the question I think is when Catello uh, oh. installs Pulp as part of Catello, do they leave analytics enabled? And I'm not sure at this point. Because if they do, that might be the case of old releases. 321, 322, and 328. Yep. I, I believe they don't. They, they, it's not enabled. That's the last thing I heard. I, I heard that there was a proposal okay. to enable it, but we'd have to ask Ian. Folks, yeah, uh, no one caring, sorry. I think what Dennis said that people just stay on the version they originally install it. So I extend my call from earlier to say we need a you need a really good installation guide, and then you need a really good upgrade guide for that basic setup. So, for and sure, you've for sure. you've had part of that in your talk already. So so yes, I am interested in the slides. For sure, for sure, for sure. I believe like I updated maybe two times like this installation which is basically like removing the old container and then just pulling like the new image version like and everything just went smoothly but um well no way i got no problem so far how how are database migration run in that upgrade scenario if you pull a new uh, every time like the container start you know like uh, trying to start up, you know, like it calls the migration scripts, you know, like, so basically like if I just turn off and turn on the, the instance again, you know, like it's going to try to run the migrations, you know. So since like, this is a very simple installation, like I hope, I really hope to, to get like no database or no migration issues. So. Are you considering uh, using it for the container plugin? maybe but like right now i don't have that much usage of different containers yeah. you know like i believe i i don't know maybe i use a dozen well so which well, you know. what i'm thinking about is the flat packs um and so i've been recently installing some packages using flat packs and it would be nice if and it's through the Fedora infrastructure, you know, that I'm doing it. And I, I, I was about to to answer that, you know, like I was about to get like a new machine, and I really tried to uh, to use um, Fedora Silver Blue or using Project Blue. Oh, I can't remember. You blue. Correctly. You blue. You blue. Thank you so much, Bill. You know, and. Just need to understand how all those pieces are gonna fit. You no, know, like again, okay, I have I'm, like these. I'm, I'm waiting for Flatpak to be GA on Pope because 
my Steam Deck uses Flatpak, my laptop runs Flatpak, my desktop runs Flatpak, and they all run the same. And I build local Flatpak for emulation. So I host my own Flatpak, and it's kind of nightmare version of them right now. I'm waiting what on the do you mean by GA? Has it been released? Lost, yeah. So I need to re read the release notes because I was not aware that it was GA. And also, a thing here, I believe, like it's because not only about flat packs, but we have the Poop OS 3 plugin. No, like, yeah. so that's like, that's I just another want to one understand. that I need to understand more. Sure, sure. I maybe I'm not right, you know, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, are we gonna have like a presentation about Poop OS 3? Lubosh? No. Only oh, about no. our container. Um, Deca, but I believe we have a um, recording on uh, on our channel. Or actually, yeah, on sure Lubosh. Yeah. Okay, folks. Um, if you don't have any more questions about the presentation, I'm gonna just close the recording here. And I gave one, gave two, and I'm stopped recording right now.